Hey guys, if you're a 3D printmaker and you work with resin printers, you probably already had the frustration of dialing in resins. I found that there is still very little information on the massive amount of printers and resins out there. And even if you do find some numbers, will they actually work for your printer? And remember, there's always environmental factors like temperature, humidity, and all that stuff will affect your print and support styles. And sometimes it's just a matter of dialing in those settings from the manufacturing, tweak them in a little bit, to get the resin to dial in. But we're gonna discuss all of that in today's video. Now with all the validation types of matrixes that there are out there to test your resin settings, it's often hard to decide which one you're gonna use. And honestly, do any of them make any sense? Because <laughs> some of them are just strange. I'm not really sure how to read some of the actual results on some of these particular tests, but I do know the one that I like to use the most, which is the Amerilabs test print. It takes a bit longer. At my particular settings, I think it takes about an hour and 20 minutes. Maybe it's like an hour and 10. But the result is essentially a good looking print that you can go, okay, this looks good. Came out good. I'm good. Uh, and of course, this is only when you're dialing in new resins. If you're working with material that you're familiar with, you should probably just do yourself a favor and save that profile so you have that resin profile saved in your slicer and you can go back to it at any point. Now, remember, the settings that you're looking at here are for my particular printers using the particular resin that we're using. Most of the settings here that I've tweaked are actually from manufacturer settings. I don't change a lot of the lift lift speed, retract speed, or lift distance and lift speed as well as retract speed on the normal layers. I don't really mess with that too much. Sometimes they will try to make it a little bit faster than the manufacturer recommends, but then even then, there's reasons why you really shouldn't do this. You're gonna overstress the FEP, you're gonna overstress the printer, it's gonna cause failures or warping, and honestly, it's not worth it to just try to speed up the print, what, maybe 20 minutes to an hour? Come on, just wait for the print. It'll work. Patience. 3D printing, I think, involves a lot of patience. I mean, otherwise, you know, you're pretty much rolling the dice and saying, well, is this gonna work? Is this not gonna work? I mean, you know, no one really wants to roll the dice on failures or successes when it comes to 3D prints. Materials are expensive, and I mean, personally, I don't like cleaning bats up, so I like my prints to work. Now, if all this sounds incredibly confusing, just relax for a second, take a deep breath, and remember, there are ways to figure this out.
Now, the other type of validation is you can use our what we call a RERF validation, a R-E-R-F validation, which is uh, something that any Cubic has set up on most of its printers, I believe, by now. This particular setup was created uh, for the Mono S, but you can alternate the validation ports around the build plate to have about eight zones to test at once. Each zone will expose at a different uh, exposure time, exposure setting. Um, so it is the fastest way to check a bunch of settings at once. But if you are like me and you just kind of overexpose a little and work down from there, the RERF option is great for just testing out new resins if you're trying to build or, or, or you're in a new building environment. Um, that's often some of the times that I would see that being most useful. Otherwise, it's kind of overkill to print eight test plates at once, unless you're really trying to get the most optimal speed, in which case you're really trying to optimize on speed, you're not really trying to optimize on quality, in which case just expose at the lower, lowest time possible, and if that works, great, then move ahead with that. Um, honestly, otherwise, don't waste your time doing RERF uh, exposure validations. It's, it's a lot of additional testing to be doing at once. You're do, using a lot more resin. Um, and what, you know, you honestly, your outcomes are going to be, you know, slight failures on one side and really overexposed on one side. That's really what you're going to wind up with. Again, we come back to the Amerilabs test print, and as far as reading or the ease of reading, uh, it's still by far the best and the easiest to read back. It will look good, clean, and solid if the print settings are good. If not, dial them up or down and try again. Remember to check the FEP and VAT for bits as well in case anything did fail. The Amerilabs test print can also be done in a few ways. Uh, I have found on Thingiverse there is a rafted, supported, etc., uh, giving you a couple different options that you might want to try. Again, I mean, I don't recommend supporting something like that and then trying to do it as a test print. That's just going to make it take longer. And I mean, what are you really testing? The supports or the object? It's a big flat chunk that's going to print on top of a bunch of supports. It's going to, yeah, it's going to have a lot of deformations to it. So honestly, it's the, the worst way to do it is doing it on supports. But there is an option to do it that way if you really want to do it. Now remember folks, even if your test print was perfect, like perfect, like the whole thing came out great. You had the Amerilabs test print, it's printed great, everything's fine. That does not mean every print you have will work. I mean, there's always this situation to consider of supporting, there's always, you know, environmental changes such as uh, temperature, humidity, etc. Those things are always gonna have a determinant factor on how well your print is gonna perform. Now. I have good successful prints fail due to chaotic things that literally felt out of my control. But for the most part, if you follow what the manufacturer is recommending for your particular printer, and then you follow what the manufacturer is recommending for your exposure settings and layer and burn in time for a particular resin, which do usually come on the bottle, um, it usually will work. Um, unless, of course, that particular resin is really just not meant for your model of printer. Now, this is something that people do run into occasionally where they buy a resin that is actually very high end and it's meant for very high end printers that have very powerful UV systems. The ones that they're using do not and therefore I think what's happening is, is there's a disconnection in the quality that's happening between the printer itself and the resin quality. You're expecting something from your printer that it can't perform. And I think that is probably part of the issue sometimes. I do see a lot of... Uh, threads and forums and things like that where people are constantly talking about validation failures or resin failures or different types of resins and a lot of times that has to do with people using a resin that is not either recommended or made for that particular type of printer and they're trying to dial in a result that is going to work and it may not even be possible so it could just be the result of just it's just not going to work.
Now remember, this shouldn't be something super confusing like time travel or something like that. We need to be able to wrap our heads around this. Resin printer settings are not that tricky and I think we can get it. Anyway, that's it for today's video guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit that subscribe, like, and the bell to get notified when we do publish new content like this. I really appreciate y'all watching. It helps the channel out. See you all real soon.